Good morning. Welcome to Victorious Faith. I'm Cherry Campbell. I have great news today. I am so excited about it. I have my new website up and running, operational. Glory, glory to God. And one reason I'm so excited about it is because God helped me by His grace and His help and the Holy Spirit to build it myself. I did it all myself with no help from anybody except just using a website building editor. And just with the editor, God helped me with the ideas and the development. And when there was a question, how do I do this? How do I make it look like this? Just the Holy Spirit taught me step by step by step. So I'm really excited about it. My new website is up and running, operational. You can go to it right now. And it's the same address, same address, uh, website address. It is still victoriousfaith.co. V-I-C-T-O-R-I-O-U-S faith, F-A-I-T-H dot C-O. C-O is like Colorado. And so at the same address, victoriousfaith.co, there is now my new website that I built myself by the help of the Holy Spirit and the teaching of the Holy Spirit. And so I'm really excited about it. You can go to it right now and look at it if uh, you're having access to that. And also, I want to ask that if um, you see something that doesn't look quite right um, Words are not um, looking right or pictures are not looking right. For example, of course, I developed this on a computer. So if it looks strange on a mobile phone, for example, a smartphone, the layout of it isn't quite right, then send me an email and let me know if there's words that aren't right, if pictures don't look right, if there's something that you see in it that say, Cherry, this needs to be fixed. Let me know because, you know, more eyes are better for uh, seeing things than just myself seeing what needs to be fixed and edited on it to make it look its best. And so if you see something that needs to be fixed, send me an email and let me know. You can write to me at info, I-N-F-O, at victoriousfaith.co, V-I-C-T-O-R-I-O-U-S dot C-O. Also, if you have suggestions, if you think, Cherry, this would be better like this, if you did it like this instead of like this, or if you see that if there's something that you don't see on the website that you would like to see on the website, some content that is not there that you would like to have, then write to me and I'm open to suggestions. Of course, uh, I'll consider everything. And if it seems right, then I will add it to the website if it seems right that that should be there. And so if you have any ideas to make this website better, to add content, I can add more pages. I can do more with it. Um, then write to me with your ideas. I am certainly open to considering ideas that uh, go along with my purpose, of course. You know, if somebody brings up something and it's not my purpose, then, of course, I would not do it. But if it goes with the purpose that I have for this website, then I would be glad to consider all your great ideas. So write to me with ideas, write to me with suggestions, write to me if you see something that needs to be fixed. And so this is a brand new website. I just launched it and um, I'm excited about it. And it's going to, I haven't quite finished adding the, all the scripture lists. The, the titles are in, but that's a very uh, slow process to put the scriptures in. And so I am doing that little by little. And so there's some content there with the, with the scripture list, but I do have the help from God's word tab. It is there with uh, the teaching articles and also the scripture lists by topic, children, marriage, finances, health, um, jobs, that kind of thing 
promises to help you to to stand on the word and speak God's word over your life. So they are there. I just haven't quite finished adding all of them in, but they are set up with the titles in at least. And so um, that there's still a little bit of content that I'm finishing up. It'll be done really quickly now, but I got everything else laid out. And so go to my website, look at it, give me feedback, Cherry. It looks great. Please don't tell me it looks terrible, but write to me and tell me it looks great. Write to me if you see something neat needs fixing. And then um, if you have suggestions, I would be very glad to hear from you. So praise God for that. Again, it was the Holy Spirit guiding, teaching much prayer over what to do and how to do it. And this is how God has uh, directed and helped me to get a website again. Glory, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Now, we are studying the subject, why some people do not get healed. Why some people do not get healed. And we're on reason number nine because of not showing mercy. And we are talking about right now the direct connection between the heart and the mouth, the connection between the heart and the mouth. And as we've read in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue. I'm also reading to you slowly out of a book called Holfetz Heim, C.H. O F E T Z C H A I M, a lesson a day, published by Art Scroll, and it's a book compiled and written by rabbis, and written to Jews. So I am actually changing where it uh, speaks to Jews. I say Christians because this b- book is a teaching. The subtitle: The Concepts and Laws of proper speech. It is so powerful. I am so uh, getting deeper revelation and insight myself as I'm studying it. And it is an excellent resource to use beside the Bible, parallel to the Bible. And so as I read it, I then go back to scriptures. And as I'm teaching you, I'm giving you scripture after scripture, one, two, five scriptures at a time because the the teachings are so parallel to scripture and there's so many scriptures in the Bible that confirm these, this lesson and digging deeper to help us understand the power of our words and the connection between heart and mouth. And so I'm reading to you from this book and I'll read a sentence or a phrase and I'll stop and I will add my own words. I'll go to the Bible and add more scripture and look at scriptures and study scriptures. And then I go back to the book. And so we're going through this. I'm actually only looking at this time, even in the introduction of the book. It's a long 50 page introduction, but it's excellent study. I recommend you get it. You read it for yourself. It's so powerful. And so Proverbs 18, 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue and reading from this book in the introduction, page 23, it says the Bible teaches us that the words we choose determine how we experience our lives. Let me read that again. The Bible and and it actually says the Torah, which is the Hebrew Bible. I change it to the word Bible. The Bible teaches us that the words we choose determine how we experience our lives by taking hold of our power of speech. We take hold of life itself. And then farther down the page, although most Christians and there it says Jews, but I change it to Christians. Although most Christians are generally aware of the Bible's prohibitions against evil speaking, 
You see, most Christians know you're not supposed to speak bad. This devastating force has somehow glided through the centuries disguised as a relatively harmless aspect of human nature. But the toxicity of evil speaking is not hard to grasp. One need only examine the aspects of human nature that fuel it. What fuels evil speaking? Where does evil speaking come from? Arrogance, anger, jealousy, a critical attitude, and a negative outlook. That is the formula that energizes evil speaking and sets it flying. So all evil speaking comes from arrogance, which is pride, anger, which is connected to strife also, jealousy, a critical attitude, and a negative outlook. That is the formula that energizes evil speaking and sets it flying. Conversely, when one follows kind, gentle words back to their source, one finds them embedded in humility. A willingness to avoid disputes. That's being peaceable and a peacemaker. Recognition of God's image in others. A focus on the good and love for others. Love for others. Then it says the mouth expresses the contents of the heart. The mouth expresses the contents of the heart. Now, right there, I have been reading to you a lot out of the Bible, giving you scriptures. And in Luke chapter six, verses 43 to 45, it says, no good tree bears bad fruit. Nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. Each tree is recognized by its fruit. And verse 45, the good man brings good things. And I've said that things there, to me, that applies to the forces of the heart. Faith and fear are spiritual forces. Love and hate are spiritual forces in the heart. Joy is a spiritual force. Sorrow and sadness and depression is a spiritual force in the heart. Anger is a spiritual force in the heart. As I said, love and hate are spiritual forces. Faith and fear are spiritual forces. So the attitudes of the heart are actually spiritual forces. Forces. And they come out the mouth. And so here, verse 45, Luke 6, 45, the good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart. And the evil man brings evil things. Of course, we change the word evil to bad. The bad man brings bad things out of the bad stored up in his heart for out of the overflow of the heart, his mouth speaks. So the mouth speaks from the overflow of the heart. And remember, we also read in Matthew chapter 12, I believe it is that we are judged by our words. We are judged by our words. Matthew 12, 37, Matthew 12, actually back up to verse 36. Well, we can back all the way up to verse verses 33 to 37. Matthew 12, 33 to 37. Make a tree good and its fruit will be good. Or make a tree bad and its fruit will be bad. For a tree is recognized by its fruit. You brood of vipers, how can you who are evil or bad say anything good? Say, if you are bad, How can you say anything good? Notice that. How can you who are bad say anything good? 
For out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if what's in the heart is bad, you cannot say anything good, but only bad. Verse 35, the good man brings good things out of the good stored up in him. And the bad man brings bad things out of the bad stored up in him. Verse 36, but I tell you the truth, tell you that men will have to give account on the day of judgment for every careless word they have spoken. So where we read in the book, people think it's harmless and they just say things carelessly. We will have to give account on the day of judgment for every careless word we have spoken. Verse 37, for by your words, you will be acquitted or justified. And by your words, you will be condemned. We will give account on the day of judgment for every careless word. That is those words we speak carelessly. Oh, it doesn't matter. I can say whatever I want to say. And we think they're harmless. Wrong. Power and life and death are in those words and we will be judged by them. And so we will be judged by our words, but also it is the words that are the, the, the representative and the outflow of what's in the heart. It's interesting in this scripture, it doesn't say we're judged by our heart. It says we're judged by our words. Why? Because the words are the direct outflow of the heart and they reveal the heart. And I, you know, some might say, well, you don't know my heart. Well, you only have to be around them for a while and listen to what they say. And you can know what's in their heart. I had somebody say that to me, somebody who's, you know, a a really close person to me and said, well, you just don't know what's in my heart. And I was thinking, I do because of what you say, what you say is revealing your heart. Now, I didn't say that out loud, but I thought it to myself. Yes, I know what's in your heart because of what you are always saying. Your heart, your words are the revealing of your heart, the revealer, the exposing of your heart. So people all around you, all around you can know your heart by you are exposing your heart every time you talk. You are exposing your heart every time you talk. And people all around you will know what's in your heart by what you say. And then I went last uh, yesterday in the last program to Proverbs chapter four, Proverbs chapter four, verses 20 to 23. My son, pay attention to what I say. Listen closely to my words, what I say. My words. Now, this is God speaking. This is the spirit of wisdom speaking. This is the Holy Spirit speaking. So we are supposed to listen to what God says and to his words. Pay attention to what I say. Listen closely to my words. Do not let them out of your sight, your eyes. Keep them within your heart, heart. For they are life the force of life to those who find them to those who find God's words and keep them in their heart. They have the force of life from his words in their heart and health to a man's whole body. Notice again, we read this in our study of proofs that healing is God's will. God's word is health. That word health also in the Hebrew language, the Old Testament was written in Hebrew and the New Testament was written in Greek. And the Hebrew of the word health is actually also medicine and cure, medicine and cure and healing. So my words are health, healing, medicine, and a cure to a man's whole what body. Notice the body is directly affected by what you put in your heart. We're studying why some people do not get healed. Well, it also relates to why some people are sick and not just some. You go to any church, as I've said before, 
and you ask the people in the congregation, raise your hand if there's anything in your body, pain or sickness of any kind, any symptom that you need healing for. And nearly every hand will be raised. That is how much is in the body of Christ. And that's just the church. Of course, the world will have it also. But the church, there is a lot of sickness in the church. But why? I think we are, we are finding the answers. We're looking at and finding answers. Why are Christians sick? And why do they not get healed? It's not because God has not already paid for healing, provided healing, and it's his will for everybody to be healed all the time. Because healing goes hand in hand with salvation and the forgiveness of your sins. We've said that before. And if you missed it, go back to those previous programs. But healing and forgiveness of sins go hand in hand. Healing is included in salvation. Healing is included in redemption. Healing is included in the the price of the shed blood of Jesus. His shed blood paid for your forgiveness of sins and your healing of your body by his stripes, you were healed. So your healing is paid for. It is bought and paid for. Why don't you have it? It's because not of God, not wanting to give it. He already gave it 2000 years ago when Jesus paid the price. It's because of people not receiving. And we are studying blocks, blocks, blockages, to healing, hindrances to healing and open doors for sickness and disease and pain where we studied, do not give the devil a foothold, do not give the devil opportunity. He is seeking whom he may devour. Don't open the door to him. Don't give him access in your life. How do you close the door on the devil? And that is also the curse of sin and death, which includes sickness and disease. It also includes poverty and lack. It also includes a broken up family. All of these things are under the curse. Don't give the devil access. Close the door. Now we're studying things that open the door to the enemy and open the door, giving access to the curse. And the same things will also block healing from coming and manifesting. And so now back to Proverbs four, look at verse 23 in the NIV. It says above all else, guard your heart above all. Above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. The King James Version says, keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Now, in the King James, the word keep also means guard and protect. You know, where the other Psalms that say God will keep you. Well, that means God will guard you and protect you and watch over you. So keep, that means guard and watch over your heart. Watch what? Your heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. The issues of life. Now that parallels to what I was saying, the forces of life in your heart are the forces of life, faith and fear, love and hate, joy and sorrow. For example, those are the forces and they're in your heart and out of your heart flow the forces of your life. And it's what produces your circumstances. Now, yesterday I read to you, The complete Jewish Bible translation is so great in this verse, translation of this verse. I love it. Complete Jewish Bible translation of Proverbs 4, 23. It says, above everything else, guard your heart, for it is the source of life's consequences. It is the source of life's consequences. Notice it's the source. It is the source of life's 
consequences. And so people think, what did I do to deserve this? What, how did this happen to me? Most people will think they are not at fault for anything that happens to them. It's not my fault. It's not my fault. It's not my fault. People never want to, most of the time, don't want to acknowledge personal responsibility for your conditions. And they want to think it's not my fault. I can't help it. It's not my fault. I can't help it that the way things are the way they are. It's not what the Bible says. The Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says that out of your heart, guard your heart for your heart is the source of life's consequences. Quit saying you can't help what's in your life. Even when it has to do with other people, your spouse, your children, guess what? Your mouth is what is producing what's in your life coming out of your heart. Your heart, your mouth can change the circumstances and situations of your life. Your heart and your mouth can change the circumstances and situations of your life. You need to change what's coming out of your mouth if you want to change your life. Well, I'm out of time. Join me again tomorrow. And remember, God loves you. You're blessed and highly favored by the Lord.